Hello, I'm Robert and welcome to my channel where I discuss everything automated algorithmic trading or simply algo trading. Today we're going to be doing another learning Python video in which we pick up where we left off with the last one, talking about the swing low, swing high approach in a live market. Particularly, we're going to start with what we have on the screen here, which is a simple chart with a 20 period simple moving average or a fast line and a 200 period simple moving average or a slow line. Now the rules, of course, are that the price must be above the 200 period and the 20 period must be above the 200 period. So we basically have what looks to be an uptrending market. Now, the last time we talked about the market condition of an ABC approach, where the moving average, the candle we're inspecting, had to be higher than the second candle, which actually had to be lower than the third candle in the context of the moving average, not the actual price. Price is simply too choppy. It would provide too many false signals. So we're using the moving average itself to detect that pattern. But we're making sure that price is above the 200 period moving average because we want to be in an uptrending market. So here we have an entry point, and we've made one slight change with today's program. Instead of examining just three candles, we're going to examine five candles. So that is, this candle, A, needs to be above B, but B needs to be below C, C needs to be below D, and D needs to be below E. In essence, we have a five candle approach that examines the moving average itself. In fact, we can actually just turn off the candle pattern altogether because it's not relevant in terms of what we're doing. So in looking at only the pattern that we see on the screen, in looking at just the moving averages, we are looking right in this zone for the swing low. And our selling point is going to be the same context for the swing high, using the same five candle pattern, but point A needs to be less than B, and B needs to be greater than C. C greater than D, and D greater than E. So we are using that approach as a means by which to using the moving averages, but looking for a pattern within the moving average itself. Here is what our bot actually looks like in terms of tracking this phenomenon. We can see A, B, C, D, and E within our averages. And we can see that right now we have no trades. So that is giving us a functionality of actually being able to see what is going on within the bot. So we will actually see that pattern here numerically. And that is the important part. That is the part and the process that the program uses to actually determine what is going to happen next. We are now looking at the historical log that the program wrote to disk so that we can see everything as it occurred. So let's go through and we see the very first line where it entered into a simulated trade. 
at this particular price. We also see that it registered that it was in a long position. So now that we know that process, we can actually see how it got into the trade. We can see the candles that put it in the trade following the A, B, C, D, E approach all the way through. That is, we are verifying that the pattern recognition of the moving average worked. And then here we see the swing high and a long position ended. And we see that it actually lost roughly $3 in this position size. And of course here it got back in and it got out at a break even. So we continue going down and seeing exactly all of the various steps and stages. Now this is a pure organic approach that uses only the moving average swing low, swing high as an entry and an exit. That is, it flows with the market organically or naturally, or what can often be referred to as the path of least resistance. And here we see that the last trade we looked at ended in a profit of what would be 15 USDT. Now at this point, we're not worried about whether or not we want to count commissions fees, maker taker, or any of that. We just want the algorithm to work. And that is what this is actually proving. The algorithm does, in fact, work. That is, this approach is 100% successful. So now we need to see, within the next stages, will it be profitable? That, of course, is the questionable part of the whole process. Again, you can see it slept for a while, got back in the market, and it does this all the way through the system, and it made another specific profit. So let's see now what that looks like without all of the tracking and just the profits and losses. In this list, I filtered out all of the intermediate activity and we see only a profit loss pattern. Of course, negative numbers are technically a loss, but that is to be expected. Remember, you're not going to get a situation that is going to be 100%, and something this simple is always going to be subject to what is called whipsaw. That is eliminated to some degree because we're using five candles versus three, which would just be the peaks and valleys. By using those extra two candles at the end, we're trying to look for a possibility of where the market is going to take off in a particular direction. But we can see that it is a lot of back and forth. Some of the profits are good, some of the losses are quite extreme. It's a very limited context really in terms of the market. As you can see, there's really not enough information to determine long-term success. But it's enough to see that our process and methodology are working the way they're supposed to be. That is, we are detecting within the moving average the pattern we are looking for. So let's get into the code and look into this detailed approach a little further. Okay, now that we are in the code, you can see that pretty much everything has remained consistent within the analysis class itself. We've actually made no changes to it whatsoever. Straightforward, consistent, easy to deal with. So now let's get down to the meat. Where did the changes actually take place from our three candle position 
to our five candle position. So far, all of this is pretty much the same. Now we've added a little bit of a difference here. We've added an elastic sleeping process because we don't want the server to get overloaded. That is the VPS. If time is the same as the old time, we just don't want to keep hammering the system, running the system load up needlessly. So we want to take a bit of a breather, let the machine's systems cool down. And that helps, of course, improve performance in the long run because we want to be able to run this extensively and continuously. Basically, this is telling the computer, sleep for one second. Now, normally, Jackrabbit Relay will watch the system load and it will add a fuzzy period to it so it might sleep one second it might sleep three seconds based upon what your server is doing. This tells it sleep only for one second, which is fine because we're dealing with a one minute candle. So we don't want to really go too crazy with this kind of a situation. That is, it's not just one after the other transitions like what we're going to see in the future where we are just going to sit here and watch this at the tick level. Then you need to have a little bit of fuzziness in the middle to kind of keep things from getting out of control. So here we see the crossovers again and the two moving averages. Simple, sweet, and effective. Now we get to the big part of the changes. Instead of three candles, we're looking at five candles. Nothing over the top and nothing overly extreme, but it is still simple in terms of our approach. And all we've done is simply augment the conditional to look for the two extra candles, that being the B row less than C row, C row less than a D row, and D row less than an E row for a long entry above the 200 period. And of course the same is true for a short entry above the 200 period. And then we simply save it. We save the data to the log as we write it out. Remember that we are using Jackrabbit Relay's logging system automatically as it's inherited from Jackrabbit Relay into our object. So you can see that the code really isn't that different. And by adding two extra candles to the analysis, we avoid some of the whipsaw even though you're still going to have it to some degree. And again, same thing here, sleeping for one second, and we're not adding anything fuzzy to it because we're using the above timing loop to keep it controlled. Not all that difficult when you really think about it, but by looking at your moving average in such a unique and different way, through looking at different perspectives. We now have a new tool to help us find our edge in the market. Now I want to talk about one final point of our strategy that we need to look at that might give us better results at higher levels of risk. Currently we're looking at a swing low but it has to be above the 200 period moving average. And then a swing high, also above the 200 period moving average. But let's take a look at a situation for our swing low that might provide better profitability. Or it could be a bigger loss. But again, risk versus reward. Let's look at the potential possibility 
of a swing low being below the 200 period moving average. That is, we know the distance between the 200 and the 20. So we can actually track that distance until we get to the highest point and then enter the swing low and track it all the way to the highest point of the swing high. In essence, we can improve our chances of profitability because we know the distance of the spread between the two indicators, as demonstrated in the last video. Again, using these techniques, thinking out of the box, thinking about the context of how we can improve our trading. This type of a system can allow us a different way, a different point of view in understanding the market. So let's look at the chart in detail and see how other points and places might be beneficial if we can track swing lows and swing highs. So we see here swing low, swing high, swing low, swing high, but they're all below the 200 period moving average or the slow line. Right now the program will enter right here and get out here, but this one it won't touch. That is it won't enter here for a short period and get out here because that could potentially go against us. So we can see how there's advantages to not following standard principles, but yet still being able to capitalize on unusual circumstances. So this trade wouldn't be taken, and neither would this trade here, where it goes up here for a profit. So that's something to think about when you're analyzing your markets. Look at the market for the possibility and potentiality of your swing lows, swing highs, or how your moving averages interact with each other. There are a myriad of different ways that you could even interpret this. For example, we could have a very basic crossover where if the fast line crosses below the slow line, we open a short position. That's a classic approach, and here it works well. Where, again, when we close, we see the profits come in. We could also take the approach and use the crossover to enter, but use the swing high to get out. Same thing on the long position. Use the crossover to get in, use a swing high to get out, and simply avoid the rest of the market. So there are a myriad of ways. But here we see using the crossover to get in, swing high, we get out. We get out with a profit. If we use the cross under to get out, we actually have a loss. So here are two different combinations or two different rationales actually give us a bit of a profitability. But it's a very small one. Whereas if we use the swing low to the swing high, we get the profits. Now you're more susceptible to whipsaw if you counter trade against the trend. But that may be better in the long run for a particular trading approach that you might be interested in. Don't just take a particular strategy at face value. Look at the charts and take it apart in a meaningful way. Look for ways that you can capitalize on opportunity because that is what's going to keep you profitable over the other 90% of people that aren't going to actually take this apart and analyze these patterns. And that is what decides your own profitability. 
Another way of looking at this chart is you can look at the inclination of the slope. For example, the upward slope here and calculate the degree of climb, rise over run. The downward slope and same thing, calculate the degree of climb of rise under run. Where you see the direction the market is going and you can plan and calculate appropriately based upon that simple context. So there are a myriad of ways and there's even more that I haven't even mentioned. We're still just using the simple moving average. And in dissecting the simple moving average, we've uncovered an enormous wealth of information that can help us stay profitable. So hopefully you found this information useful, and we are going to continue to develop it even further. But you should now have the base points for looking at the market with the code examples I've provided and being able to actually see opportunities at a rudimentary level. And we are going to continue to build on this, expand on it, and quite literally take this piece by piece over each indicator. When we are done, we are going to have a repertoire of tools that will help us look at the market in a whole new and different direction. This code will be available in the supplementary repository. If you're a subscriber through my Patreon or through GitHub, you'll get access to it. If not, please check out the link below in the description. Please give this video a like if you thought it was helpful, and please subscribe if you're not. Thank you for watching, and until next time.